Hello friends, Tom Downey here for NFL Daily, taking you through all of the latest Carolina Panthers rumors. First up, will Daryl Williams get a new contract? I'm going to give this one three heads. It does indeed seem pretty likely. Williams, frankly, was great last year for the Carolina Panthers. He was absolutely incredible at the right tackle spot was consistently one of the Panthers' best offensive linemen, if not their best overall offensive lineman, alongside Trey Turner. Now, he is entering the last year of his contract, and the report from the Charlotte Observer was that the deal should be done by the start of the season, and be a, it'd be a bit of a surprise if that did not happen. Now, we'll talk more about Matt Khalil later on in the show, but Williams is easily the Panthers' best offensive tackle. I have included Taylor Martin on there, even though he could end up starting a guard this year for Carolina. As for what contract Williams could get, it's going to be a bit expensive. Now, here are the highest paid right tackles in the NFL. Frankly, you could be approaching the five-year, $55 million deal the Panthers gave Matt Khalil. That might be where Darrell Williams wants to start his contract negotiations because he's going to ask for a lot of money because he is, without a doubt, one of the best right tackles in the NFL. All right, next up, Kevon Seymour. Is he going to start for the Panthers? I'm only going to give it two heads for now because it might change, but Seymour, as we sit, he's kind of the favorite right now to be that other corner for the Panthers. He's the favorite to be the number two after OTAs. Of course, James Bradbury, he's the number one guy there. Remember, the Panthers traded for Seymour in a trade with Buffalo. They gave up Kalen Clay, a deal that I think has worked out pretty well for Carolina so far. Seymour was a backup cornerback for Carolina last year, and frankly, I don't really love the depth chart at corner for Carolina. They did bring in Dante Jackson. They have Captain Munnerlin as well. Lorenzo Doss has looked pretty good during OTAs. I've always liked Corn Elder as well. I threw in Rashawn Golden later down because I think he might play more safety than cornerback. But my big fear for Carolina seems to be a lot more number two and nickel type corners than a true outside number two. So just keep an eye on that. But folks, I want to hear from you guys, everyone that's watching. Who should be the Panthers' number two cornerback this year? Let me know in the comments section. Is it Dante Jackson? Is it Doss? Is it Golden? Is it is it Seymour? Is it somebody else altogether? Let me know who you think it should be in the comments section. We'll keep it rolling now with some more Panthers. Here. We'll get to number three on our list. And at number three, we're going to talk a little bit DJ Moore. Does he want a fully guaranteed rookie contract? I'll give this one three heads. Not quite announced by Moore, but it does make some sense. And, of course, doesn't mean he's going to get it either. But Moore has yet to sign his rookie deal with Carolina. Now, the good news is you're not going to find the holdouts. Those are almost non-existent thanks to the new rookie scale for Carolina. What makes sense is that the number 22 overall pick, Rashawn Evans, did get a fully guaranteed deal from Tennessee. Number 23 pick, Isaiah Wynn, has yet to sign. So, in all likelihood... Once Isaiah wins signed, if he gets a fully guaranteed deal, Moore will want the same from Carolina. If he doesn't, then he's probably not going to get it either. So just wait and see there on DJ Moore. He'll sign. Don't panic. But it is going to be a waiting game to see when number 23 pick signs, and then it should be DJ Moore after that. Speaking of receivers, who will lead the Panthers in receiving yards this year? Let me know in the comments section if it's Greg Olson, Devin Funches, if it's a DJ Moore, maybe it's Christian McCaffrey. Let me know who, folks, in the comments section. If it's your first time watching NFL Daily, here's what the heads mean as we go through each of the rumors. Zero heads, it's fake news, don't buy it. One head, a small shred of truth, not quite accurate, but there is some semblance of truth behind it. Two heads means people are talking, and this is firmly in that rumor category. Three heads means more probable than not, not quite set in stone, but it should come true. Four heads means it's fact news, totally believe it. Next up is Matt Khalil, Carolina's worst contract. I'm going to give this one three heads. I thought about giving it four. Maybe Khalil improves next year or someone else ends up having a bad deal. Khalil signed a five-year, $55 million contract during the 2017 offseason. Includes $31 million in guaranteed money. Now, his salary only counts 6.9 against the cap this year, which really is not that bad. But it jumps up to 12.9 the season after that, and mm, that's not what you want to see. You know, by the way, with the way the guaranteed money is structured, the, the, the Panthers can make him a post-June 1st cut next year if they really wanted to and save about $8 million, but it also includes $9 million in dead cap the year after that. So not a great contract for Matt Khalil and the Panthers, but the good news is for Carolina, not a whole lot of bad contracts on that list. Speaking of Khalil, will this year be a bounce-back season for the Panthers' left tackle? I'll give it two heads. It could come true, but I'm not super confident in it. And Khalil 
does make some good points in an interview with Panthers.com. Says, you know, I wasn't right earlier in the year. Now I've got this full healthy offseason to improve and get better. My bend is going to be better. And he was better after the first three games. Last year, three sacks and six hurries in the first three games. Not good. or Actually, really, really bad. And then three sacks and 25 in the final 14. So he was better down the stretch, but you still want to see better play from Khalil. I think the Panthers are paying to be a borderline top 10 tackle, which last year he most certainly was not. All right, folks, one final rumor. Will Christian McCaffrey have an increased workload this season? I'm going to give it three heads. I think he'll definitely get more carries, but I don't know just how much more. Yes, Jay Stu is gone, so the opportunity is there. And Ron Vera says he thinks McCaffrey can handle the full workload, and I agree. He only had 117 carries last year, only for 435 yards, not great. So he should get more touches on the ground, but the signing of C.J. Anderson does mean that he will get a little bit less work than he could have had before that. The Panthers will give Anderson the ball plenty. McCaffrey is going to be without a doubt the number one back, but his activity in the passing games means you could see McCaffrey at times get some breathers with Anderson approach 100 plus carries this year. So folks, let me know how many rushing yards will McCaffrey have this year. I'll put the over under around 700, 750. That's not a ton, but McCaffrey's going to be very involved in the passing game. And he puts up about four yards per carry on about 200 touches. He can get more than that, but he was under four yards per carry last year, only at 3.7. So, folks, let me know what you think McCaffrey will put up this year on the ground. I'll go under 1,000, but he'll be so involved in the passing game, I think he'll approach 1,500 overall this year in both the receiving and the ground game. All right, folks, I am Tom Downey. Follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for more Panthers and NFL coverage. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for more NFL Panthers content all season and off season long. Until then, we'll see you next time.